One of the greatest attractions of the devil is lukewarmness. One of the greatest attractions of the devil is what? Lukewarmness. A lukewarm person, he likes to see a lukewarm environment. The Bible says that when a demon checks out of a man, he goes looking for rest. When he doesn't find rest, then he says to himself, let me go back to my what? house. Is that not so? Paradventure, I will find comfortability there. So, one of the things you must not give to in your life is lukewarmness. The moment you begin to reduce the number of times you come to church, you reduce in your fasting life, you reduce in your study life, then you, you get to a point where you no longer understand yourself. A little, I miss church. A little, I don't pray again. Let me just rest a little. There. We have some sliding, not just backsliding. So that's why the Bible says that be fervent in spirit. Do not be thoughtful in business, but be fervent in what? Spirit. Serving the Lord. So one of the things you must approach your service with is what? Fervency. Fervency simply means to be on spiritual fire. To be red hot. You can't say you are fervent and you are praying The more we play with your life. You must approach everything you do with what? Spiritual fire. Psalm 69 verse 9, David saying there, he said the zeal of my father's house has what? Consumed me. There must be the outward show of zeal. What God see is your sacrifice towards him. What men see is your zeal. That's why you, you pray careless brother, and they still press you at night. You don't show to the devil that you are serious with what you are doing. You don't tell the devil, Satan, leave me. It's not a sign of spiritual maturity. You are a baby. Do we understand that? Do we understand that? You must get to a point where you give a shout. Say, Satan, enough! Get out from this place! He understands you mean business. This is why sometimes we stay in certain unpleasant condition for too long. Because we massage it. The day you tell yourself you are tired of your situation, then change has come. But when you begin to massage it, looking for self-pity, self-sympathy, then you find out that you stay there for a very long time. The highest any man can give to you is temporary succumb. The least a believer should pray should be one hour stretch. That's the least. If now you can say, ah, sir, but there, sir, there are people you know, they are not fervent in spirit. They are just, you know, doing one of the things here and there and they are successful. We know the secret you don't know. The Bible said, see it thou a man that want to take a war with another king without him sitting down to find out if his army is enough to defeat that king. If he discovers that his army is not enough, what does he do? The Bible says he enters into what we call conditions of peace. Say, Satan, just don't worry. Allow me to be successful. I will smoke all my life. They've entered into a condition of peace. As a great servant of God, Bishop David Oelba will say, life is not a fun fair, but a battlefield. You have to be in a fight daily, or you become a prey. Even when you are asleep, there are cases on your matter. Do we understand that? Even while you are what? Asleep. There are people who are looking for your disappearance. Why do we joke as Christians? Get to a point that your Christianity goes from just mere traditional Christianity to seriousness with God. Being called a Christian is not a guy name. It's a challenge. It is two things. That number one, you are Christ-like. And number two, you have a special connection to the man called Christ. That's what it means to be called a, and they took notice of them that this type of special kind of people you must feel it anytime i see somebody in the midst of a situation praying so long that's a sign you don't have a prayer life you the bible calls us royal priesthood first peter 2 and verse 9 so we are standing in two offices in the olden times what we had were kings who were connected to spiritual connections called prophets but in our dispensation those two offices were swallowed into one man it's all about you, Jesus. I know this is for you, for your glory and your fame. It's not about me, as if you should do things my way. Not God, and I surrender. 
is not about me Jesus I know this is for you for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are God and I surrender Isaiah 56 verse 10 now there is something called the mysteries of watchmen every man God raises he raises as a watchman on the earth do we understand that look at what the Bible says he said that his watchmen are blind and they are all ignorant and they are all dumb dogs they cannot back the Bible says they cannot back sleeping lying down loving to slumber this is how the devil attacks watchmen and you know why it's because of deferred hope one of the things you must understand that's why i want to touch that part where i say they are all ignorant you need wisdom to understand that the first principle of a watchman is called acclimatization do you remember the story of how certain pigs um the demons did or one cast from the uh, man at gathering and he said please send me to the pigs because i am aware i'm used to this atmosphere don't send me away if you send me to a new place it will be difficult for me to understand listen so the first thing that happens to a watchman a man god wants to raise in a family a man god wants to raise in a dispensation a man god wants to raise in a city is that he brings that man into the very problem he's meant to solve now instead of see you if god wants you to deal with poverty issue you will see poverty every aspect of your pain he said and they knew him at the breaking where he breaks you is where he wants to reveal himself these are the things we know that keeps us strong in god check women who have had terrible marriages experiences they become experts in relationship affairs what he wants you to solve you will first become a partaker of it to understand it that's why some of the things we could attend to is because we have understood it this is why the, the watchman decides to sleep decides to slumber you cannot solve a problem you have not partaken of three scriptures even jesus had to get be born into the home of a carpenter to have mastery over wood do you think most time nails were piercing him have you seen a tailor that needle has not chewed so when he was nailing a chair, the end, he has mastery. He knows the pain of nails. Give me oil in my lamb. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamb. I pray. Oh, give me oil in my lamb. Keep me burning. Keep me born in the world. There is no watchman without a story. The glory of your life is backed up by the story behind it. No star without a scar. One of the greatest man with the healing grace I know is death now. Pastor had his child for years. Could it work, the daughter? He will go to meetings. He will come back home. He will sit down with the Bible. Wanted to study. And then he will see the little girl. At how much age? Old age. She can walk. But you know humiliation is the way to the glory in this kingdom. In this kingdom there are patterns and protocols. Which men rise. You don't rise by mistake. No man is suddenly used by God. The problem is because you have come to a breathing center of the devils. There is no one man with a sound prayer life. I can see the kind of issues you complain about. You are just being lazy. You are genuinely on fire. Red hot for God. I can go and sleep over your case and say, no matter what it you, you survive it. John G. Lake came from a family where it looks like it was a burial ground. They were burying people by mass. He came to 
South Africa with a message. I said Jesus healed. Then he lost his wife. To a point they had this COVID-19 thing disturbing them in their days. And they said, sir, you don't need to get close to it. He's it in my hands and watch it die. He has gone through that situation. A man cannot see an ocean and see a river and be scared. That's why I said in this kingdom and in this Christianity, what is your CV? What is your testimonial of God's faithfulness? What is stop this lukewarm Christianity? Stop it. Stop it. Oh Lord. Set my heart on fire for you. Do you know that the great Archbishop Ben C. Dawosa was so sickly to a point his mother threw him away? not knowing he was to be one of the father of the Pentecostal movement with the healing anointing. You will pass through the problem you are born to solve. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I know of a woman, you just telling her that you are buried, the womb will open. How did she break into that oil? She saw barrenness for years. To a point, you know you become one with it that you are the answer. You are not just sent with a gift, you are the gift. Pass through what you are born to solve. Imagine if Archbishop Idawosa was not paying attention to that desire in the inside of him and said, This sickness must end. Paul was looking for pity, party, and self pity. We will become the man we celebrate today. Instead of you to challenge yourself, pray through till you get out of that condition and you become an authority and a lord in that matter you are getting angry at God getting angry at everyone around you as if there are any man you see that you are angry at he has also been through his process to become what he was as that is it is have you seen it that a nation can be born at once no but as soon as Zion travel she shall give birth that's why you try it by mechanical means it doesn't work because there is no body or desire pushing you to that place of prayer. Set me on fire. When the devil is after your zeal and passion. Once he makes you look warm. You hear what the Bible says about watchmen? Once he makes you look warm. You love to slumber, sleep, complain, relax. You are finished. Anything can go around your life. How did I learn it? Because I was on fire. So that quickening in the inside of me was so tuned to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Your pain that should make you stronger is what is making you weak. Why? Why? Have you studied the lives of great men? Bishop Oyedepo had his wife sitting on a crippled chair for two years. Two years! And he never cursed this God and died. Two years sitting on a crippled chair. The story is still on, on, on the internet. You go check a picture sitting like this for two years. You are now wondering the authority by which they say, Everybody lift up. I can pray now and sicknesses will jump out. It's from there. How, 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 how do you want to be so great that in 24 hours you can't boast of a one hour prayer life? The devil can't silence your glory. Don't keep quiet, don't sleep on destiny. You know when you do that, you know what will happen to you? You begin to look for another woman's child because you have slept on yours.